You've probably seen amazing characters in games and films, from ultra realistic heroes to bold stylized designs. No matter the look, there is always a 3D character artist behind the screen bringing them to life. Getting into the field can be overwhelming, especially if you're just starting out. All the tools, techniques and details might seem like a lot, but here's the good news. With the right approach and a bit of guidance, anyone can do it. Hey, I'm Adrian, a 3D character artist for Flix Interactive. I'll take you through the whole process of creating a game-ready character, just like you see the ones in AAA titles. And we'll keep things focused, starting with the most expressive and challenging part of any character, the face. Stylized characters are all about keeping things clear and readable. A great way to start is by collecting references. Mix references from games to films or even cartoons. Make sure they match the style you are going for. Try analyzing the concept. See what makes the character look the way they do. You are not going for super realism. Your aim is to make it look clear and readable. A great example of that is Overwatch. You can tell the character even from just looking at the silhouette when they are black and white. You can tell who the characters are even if you look at the silhouette. A great way to get used to planes of the head is to study the Asaro head. Make sure you practice and become comfortable with it. Don't just copy, understand what you are doing. A great way to start a block out is to keep it simple and low poly. A big beginner mistake is to jump into details way too soon. It's hard to make the character look good if the fundamentals are missing. The goal for you is to find the landmarks of the face. See what makes the face look the way it is. Is it because the eyes are far apart from each other or is it because the head's shape is more square? Don't be scared to start from scratch. It's always better to just reset and try again. After you're happy with the block out, take a screenshot and put it on Photoshop side by side with the concept. Draw lines from where the important landmarks are and see if they match with your block out. You can overlap the images and you can flicker it on and off. It'll help you see the differences between the concept and your block out. After you are done with the block out, duplicate the face into a new subtool. That will help you come back in case if you're not happy with the new changes you made. Now you can dynamash the head for a higher resolution so you can start pushing the forms even more. A great brushes to use are H Polish, Dam Standard, and clay build up. Those brushes are amazing and really good at making you focus on the shapes and forms. It will also keep you away from smoothing everything. Stylization thrives on confident shapes and clear forms. Our next step will be redopologizing. The only way for us to use the high poly mesh in games or film is to make it low poly or mid poly. Depending on a game or film is how much we need to optimize the mesh. The range can be pretty wild. It can go from 7,000 polygons to almost 200,000 polygons. But because we are doing stylized characters, we don't need too many polygons. Recommendation is first looking into the games your character will fit in. Are you doing it for Overwatch? Or are you doing it for League of Legends? We need to analyze what we can combine in the mesh and what can be kept separate. For example, in some cases you can combine the clothes or the armor with the skin of the character. When it comes to redopology, it's great to remember to keep the square instead of rectangles. You just need to understand where the loops go, around the mouth, ears, fingers, etc. I really recommend grabbing as many references as you can to see a different parts of bodies and how they are redopologized. There's a lot of different ways of people doing it. Remember, instead of copying, try to understand. Every character is different and in every time you make a new character, you need to figure out a way the redopology to work with the mesh you created. And after a really painful time of redopologizing, it's time to UV your character. You need to UV your character before you apply textures. It's pretty straightforward, so nothing to worry about. You want to keep your UVs as straight as possible. If if the mesh will be, the texture will be repeated, for example, on the left and right, kind of symmetrical, then you want to stack the UVs on top of each other. To do that, you basically UV one side of the mesh and then you mirror it and then you keep them on top of each other. So when you texture on top of that, then the texture will be translated on both sides, left and right. Understand where you can save space and what can be smaller, what can be bigger, especially when you do this hand painted stuff. If you have like a button on the character, then it's, you can keep it pretty small because it could be like basically one color. But if you have like a complex armor piece or some crazy pattern, then you need to increase the size of it and then keep it nice and snug inside of the UV space. The thing you need to worry about is basically keeping everything nicely stacked and there's almost no space in between the UV sheets. Now guys, I will talk about my part of the work. My name is Ruslan, I am working as a texture lead. So after making UVs, we need to get information from high poly model and it's called baking. You can make it in any 3D modeling software. This process is straightforward and technical and the result of the baking really depends on previous stages, on your retopology and UVs. After baking, you'll get all of the necessary maps that you need to apply in the game and also while texturing. It will be normal, ambient occlusion, curvature and others. In the next step, we will have texturing. 
All we need is to create simple color base at first. Me and Adrian obviously we use Substance Painter for this stage on our daily work. You can create color base using few colors and light generators in Substance or it's even better to apply the smart material that will create color base for you. Now all we need is to change colors based on the concept and only after this stage, once we have our finished color base, we will need to add even more hand paint details, especially on the face of the character. It will push the model way more. For the face, we don't need to invent anything, we just need to analyze the best artist out there. This is his profile and he helped me a lot. If you take a close look, even in this eye area, you will be amazed how many of the details we have. For example, this line above the eye, even these small highlights. Inside of the eye, we have papil itself, we have some light on the papil, it will be warmer because the light will come from the top. Not only this, we have some details here, some highlights, and also the brightest white highlight. Then we have white highlight here, we have reflection from the sky, and we even have another small highlight right here. And on top of this, we also have cast shadow from the eye. Also this tiny detail was hand painted, these eyebrows as well, and even these details. And in my opinion analyzing process is the hardest because right away you won't see much of the details. Some people won't see that this lip is actually blended with the skin color. Here we have very small cast shadow, we have highlight here. This lip is actually darker and colder compared to this one. Not only this, on the face we have different areas with different colors. Might be a bit overwhelming but these are all of the steps that will push the model to literally AAA quality. And and only once we finish our texture, sometimes we need to create additional maps based on this texture like roughness or metallic and only then we need to light our model. There are some ways how to make it, but we suggest to have 3 point light setup. And to simply break it down, first of all you need to pick the best angle of your character. And from this angle we will have our main light that will come right on the character. The purpose of this light is to simply show volume and separate the character on the light side and shadow side. This is very clear example, here we have the light and we have a shadow. Only then we add a fill light. It could be a sun in blender, it could be HDRI. The purpose of this light is to make the shadows less darker and fake the sky environment. And only then we add rim light from the back. This way we can make our silhouette pop a bit more and make the final result more interesting. And this is exact light setup that we teach in our course with Adrian. And after lightning and rendering we need to present our work. I will give the work to Adrian because he has one of the best presentations that I saw. At the end of every project I try to do as many renders as I can. So then when it comes to picking I have so many options and I can kind of see what I want to pick and what kind of result I'm looking for. I usually try to do about six to eight renders of my main character with different lighting scenarios and different angles and poses. And at the end, I can pick one of my favorite ones. And after I pick my favorite angle, then I try to do a close up of the character. There's a big mistake in beginners when they do close ups on almost every part of the character. You only want to do close ups of the areas you are proud the most or have the most detail or look the best. Remember, you are trying to sell your product. Show everything that's amazing and hide stuff that are not good. And after that, we do a breakdown. Wireframe renders, diffuse renders, normals, roughness, etc. You can do a turntable for your character so you can see all angles and if there's, for example, a dynamic pose, it really help to push your project to a next level. But remember, quality is king. Don't do too much, do only good stuff. And here comes the most important part of your project the presentation. And this is where most of the beginners go wrong. In this process, sometimes it takes the longest. And in my case, it always does. I see so many times when people spend a lot of time sculpting, texturing, re-apologizing, re-sculpting. And then at the end, they just put the character in like an empty black void with horrible lighting. And they basically ruined the whole presentation and the vibe of the character. And I also did the same mistake when I started. I always put my characters on black backgrounds and their shadows were so deep it was hard to tell the details and the silhouette. I've seen a lot of cases when the sculpt didn't even look that good, but with right presentation and with right rendering you can make it look so much better and tell a cool story with it. Spend as much time as you can on the presentation. This is a moment when it will take you from beginner to professional. When people hire you studios they want to know 
that you can sell your product. So make it look as appealing as possible. Try to sell yourself. I also do a lot of post-processing on Photoshop, but it really depends on the character. Sometimes you can get really good results after just rendering, but sometimes it's good to add a little bit extra touches on Photoshop. Do your research, see what get likes, see what brings the most attention and how people become popular. If your works get a lot of attention, you become more recognizable and what comes with that is more connections, more job opportunities and more following. It's all about building your reputation. You want to be known for high quality instead of posting a lot of work that are below mediocre or mediocre. Thank you so much for listening. It's been Adrian and Ruslan. Good luck with your art journey. Don't give up and work hard. Guys, I hope you like this video. We created this character from complete scratch for our course. And if you want to learn this entire profession, I highly recommend checking the website in the description. We have an option to learn with feedbacks and we already have some results.